Hey, this is Pastor Chris Garcia from Numa Church, and we're so glad that you tuned into our podcast today. I pray that as you listen to today's message, God will speak to your heart in a powerful way. So guys, today we are starting a new series, which I've titled Pray First. Can you say that with me? Pray first, all right? And this series is gonna take us through the month of August. And what are we gonna be talking about? If it's called Pray First, what are we talking about? We're talking about prayer, all right? You don't need to be a rocket scientist to know that it was called Pray First. We're gonna talk about prayer, all right? And the importance of prayer. And let me, let you guys, let me tell you guys something. I'm very excited for this series because next week we're starting our 21 days of prayer, all right? Actually, on Sunday, we're going to launch it and we're going to go for 21 days all the way to the 28th of August, all right? Where we're going to be having prayer, okay, for 21 straight days. And why 21 days? Because we're going to see in a second, uh, a lot of psychologists say that in 21 days, you establish new habits in your life. How about that? How many of you guys need some new habits in your life? You know, some of you guys, uh, you know, proposed in your mind that we were in a conference this week and the pastor said something so funny that when the year was ending, he had proposed this year to, in his mind, to lose 20 pounds. And he gave a report to the church that he has 30 more pounds to go now that they're in. I was like, that sounds amazing, you know? (laughs) Started with 20, he's at 30 now at the mid-year. So, We're talking about habits. God wants us to establish the habit of what? A prayer, all right? 21 days of prayer is created for that. We do that at the beginning of the year and we mix it up with fasting, all right? The second one, all right, fasting is optional. You wanna fast, you go ahead and do it. But the reason that we do this is because we're coming out of summer, all right? And a lot of us, you know, are, you know, have that summer slump, that summer way coming from vacation and all that. Let me tell you, school starting in two weeks, just in case you don't know. And traffic is starting in two weeks, just in case you don't know. So you need to be prayed up and ready, all right, so that this will be a great fall season as we go into September and October and those, uh, you know, beautiful months. So how do we do the 21 days of prayer here at NUMA? Okay, we're going to have live prayer at 6 a.m. in this place every day, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. in this place. You guys are all welcome to come. All right. On Saturdays is going to be at 9 a.m. All right. Don't show up at 6 a.m. on Saturday because you're going to see that the gate's going to be closed. All right. Saturdays is at 9 a.m. And during the week, all right, on, on social media, Facebook Live and Instagram at noontime. All right. We have it in Spanish and at 1230 in English. So there's going to be prayer all over the place. We want you guys to be a part of it. Okay, this is not just for, oh, PC and a couple of the pastors are going to be praying. No, this is for the church, all right? Because we want to learn to do what? Pray first. We want to learn to pray first, all right? And uh, we're going to be giving you guys some bracelets. I don't know how many of you guys like giveaways, but we're going to give you guys some bracelets. I always have my little bracelet that says pray first on. But we're going to give you guys that as you guys leave this morning, all right? Those little pray first bracelets for all you guys, when you look at your wrist, you're oh, man. I got to pray first. You know what I'm saying? Let me remember that. And also, we're going to give you a little card. We've been doing this for a few years, and I think it's had a great success. A little card that you put the names of 10 people that you want to be praying for. All right? And that card, you're going to go ahead. You're going to write down names of people that are around you. They could be your coworkers. They could be neighbors. People that do not know the Lord yet. And you're going to start praying during these 21 days. You're going to go ahead and pray for those people, all right? In a very special way, specific way, you're going to go through that list. And I don't know how many of you guys like gifts. Anybody like gifts? I'm going to give you guys a a, a good gift, all right? What am I going to give you? Listen, all right? August 29th, we end the 21 days of prayer on the 28th. On the 29th, all right, I want you guys to invite those people that are on your list, All right, whoever brings the most visits on August 29th, Jimmy, I'm sorry for what I'm going to say, but we're going to give away two free dolphin tickets, Miami dolphin tickets, all right, to whoever brings the most visits on the 29th from your list of prayer, all right, it's not against the Jets, all right. There's a Jets fan in my service, I don't even know how that happens, only in Miami, man, all right. So two dolphin tickets we're going to give away 
all right, to whoever brings the most visits on August 29th. How many of you guys are going to start? Oh, I'm inviting a bunch of cats that day. You know, hey, bro, I need you to go to church with me. Why, why? Just come, man. I need you to come, you know? And uh, I believe when you bring those people that day, God's going to encounter them. He's going to touch their hearts and do amazing things in their lives, all right? So why is this series called Pray First? Why is it called Pray First? Because I think it's the first thing we should do all the time, every day in our lives. You see, before you start your day, I think you should do what? Pray first. I think that, you know, before you go to sleep, last night my wife and I are about to go to sleep. What do we do? We prayed first. We prayed. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you did today. Lord, we put tomorrow's day in your hands. Before going to work or school, what should we do? We should pray first. Before reading your emails, what should we do? Pray first. Before checking your texts. How many of you guys you wake up in the morning, turn on the phone and see how many texts came in? You know, you should do what? Pray first. There you go, man. You should pray first. And that's what God wants to take us to with this series before we react. A lot of times we just react to situations, to problems, to things that are going on. What does God want us to do? Hey, take a breath, calm down and do what? Pray first before making the big decisions, guys. Before you make any decision, and especially the big ones in your life, what should you do? You should pray first, okay? So you guys understand what I'm talking about. I'm convinced that in our human nature, our reaction is not to pray first. In our human nature, our reaction is always to try to solve things, to do something about the problem. To go ahead and, and, you know, call up a friend or call up the pastor, you know, or do a hundred things. But usually one of our last resources is what? To pray. We do all these things because we were conditioned to do what? To act and take care of ourselves. If I don't look out for myself, no one's going to look out for myself. And God, I don't even see a God. You know, I don't even know if he's there in the middle of this problem or this circumstance. So I got to do something about it. And during the series, I want to teach you that, you know what? You could pause and you could do what? You could pray first and let God intervene in your life, in your situation, in your problem, whatever it is that you're going through, all right? So what is prayer? You're going to see it behind me, all right? This is a very simple definition. If we could put that in the PowerPoint. What is prayer, okay? Prayer is your conversation with God. I'm not going to complicate it anymore. Pastor, give me a theological. No, 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 no. Prayer is your conversation with God. Prayer is talking to God. What am I doing now with you guys? I'm talking to you. And hopefully as I talk to you, you know, certain things fall in their place. That's what prayer is about. Talking to God. You talk to him. And then what do you do? You calm down so that you could listen. Now, God might not speak to you the way that I'm speaking to you right now audibly, but you know what? I really believe God will speak to you through his word. God will speak to you through his Holy Spirit to your heart. God will speak to you through people around you. And all of a sudden you see two or three people in different circumstances tell you the same thing. And you're like, how did this happen? This God God is in that, you know? So, Okay, what is prayer? Prayer is your conversation with God. And I want to tell you something, church, very important this morning. It's not something religious. You know, a lot of us think that, well, we got to repeat this, or we got to repeat that, because that's what we were taught, you know, in the traditional church, that you have to say this prayer 10 times. And if you do that, then it's going to work, you know, and then God is going to hear. No, prayer is not anything religious, all right? It's not just repetitions that don't make sense. You know, I remember when they would call me to pray and I was just starting to walk with the Lord and I would hear some people that would pray. And when I would hear those people praying, it would intimidate me because I was like, I can't pray like that, dude. I mean, that guy is using some names for God that I didn't even know those names were in the Bible. I'm just figuring out my Bible, you know, and it would scare me. And I'm here to tell you this morning, okay, that if you're going to pray, you don't have to get into all these big words and repetitions. God's not going to hear you just because you use all these things. 
You know what? If you speak to God from your heart, you know what God is doing? He's leaning in and he's hearing what you have to say. So just speak to him, have that conversation with him. Prayer should not be a heavy burden that you wake up in the morning and say, oh, I got to pray. And God's going to curse me if I don't pray today. No, man, God's not in the cursing business. <laughs> you know, you know, so sh prayer should not be something heavy. All right. And prayer is not words that you just throw up in the air. Like, hello, is there anybody up there? You know, I'm just going to say this. And if Lord, you catch that. All right. I think that most of the people in reality, they don't pray because they haven't understood prayer. They haven't understood it. And that's why for me, you know, uh, sharing uh, this series is so important. Okay, listen to this, guys. Prayer is most effective when it isn't something we do every now and then, but when it's a lifestyle that we cultivate. Prayer is more effective, not when, oh, let me just see when I do it. No, when it becomes what, guys? A lifestyle. A lifestyle that you cultivate, that you give time to. And today's teaching I've actually called it creating a lifestyle of prayer. Creating a lifestyle of prayer. And I want us to go in your Bibles to Mark chapter 1. This is a beautiful scripture. Mark chapter 1, we're going to look at verse 35. And it's right here behind me. You guys can mark it in your Bible, all right, or you have it on your phone, highlight it. And I'll actually stayed saved, which is great. It says, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he did what, guys? He prayed. So today, I want to talk to you guys about four things that we can learn from Jesus to create a lifestyle of prayer. Four things that we can learn from Jesus, from that scripture right there, okay, to help us create what? A lifestyle of prayer. Number one, write this down. Prayer should become a habit. I spoke about that just a second ago when I was talking about the 21 days of prayer. Prayer should become what, guys? Should become, and we can put it in the slide, please. Prayer should become a habit, all right, Luke chapter 5, verse 16. It says, But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places, and he did what? And he prayed. What does it mean that he often withdrew? What does that mean? That it was something that was becoming what in his life? A habit. Now, I've always thought about something, and this is something that I really, really, really think we should ought to consider. If Jesus is the Son of God, and He is God, okay, and He took time to pray, don't you think you and I should make a habit of prayer? I mean, because if anybody can skip out on prayer, it's God. God is like, hey, I'm God, you know, I can do all these things. Let me just, you know, today let me just stay in. And it says here, you know, that he got up early in the morning and he left. I love the part, the Bible is so detailed. He got up. Because a lot of us are in bed. It's like, you know what? I'm going to pray from here today. Because you know in the morning when your pillow feels real cold. And that happened to you guys. I mean, sometimes you toss and turn. And finally in the morning, you're like, oh, I hit the good spot right here. And you're all covered and everything feels so good. And then dee, 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 the alarm rings like, oh no, don't tell me I got to get up. Jesus didn't say, oh man, let me just pray from here. No, what did he do? He got up. He got up and he did what? He prayed. I remember being with Milton. I'm going to use you as an example because it's really, a, it was a, mo a model to me. We were in, 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 in Israel. And Milton and I had the, the privilege of bunking. We've bunked together a bunch of times. And we were in Israel and we were getting in late, you know, from all the things that we were doing, the tour and stuff like that. And Milton would put his alarm every morning. All right. Now, listen to this. I'm the pastor. He's bunking in with me. And that alarm would sound and Milton wouldn't even go to the bathroom. I was like, bro, this guy has a gift that I don't have. And Milton would just roll over from the bed to the floor and put the worship music. And he would start praying. And I'd be there in the bed. I was like, oh, Lord, man, we got in so late last night. I, I, Lord, just give me 10 more minutes, please. 10 more minutes. How many of you guys negotiate with God like the 10 more minutes? And you know what I told myself? Come on, 
you're the pastor. You got to model to him. What are you doing? Get up. I'm like, all right, all right, let me get up. But I can't do that thing. I have to go to the bathroom first, you know, go to the bathroom and then go to prayer. Milton has established a habit of prayer and it's amazing. Another person that I look up to so much is my pastor, Pastor Larry Stockstill. Pastor Larry Stockstill gets up every day, rain or shine, five o'clock in the morning. He doesn't need the alarm anymore to wake him up. He's just up. And this man will pray. He will pray or walk. And we were staying in a retreat place. And I'll never forget, I got up early one morning. I'm like, man, I'm going to go for praying. And I see a shadow over there of a person with a dog. He had a dog. And I see a person. I'm like, man, who in the world is in this place? This place is supposed to be closed in. And nobody's supposed to be walking around. And, you know, my heart starts racing. You know, all these things start coming to your mind. And all of a sudden, as the figure started getting closer and closer, it was Pastor Larry walking his dog at 5 a.m. already praying. You see, he built a habit of doing what, guys? A habit of prayer. Say with me, a habit of prayer, all right? Now, listen to this. Prayer is a foundation, okay? And it's a trigger habit, all right? It's a trigger habit that triggers all other habits according to productivity. People that talk about production, that you need to produce, they call prayer one of these foundational habits that you can build upon. Now, I want to say something. Habits, okay, this is important. You don't break habits, you exchange habits. You don't break a habit, you exchange it for something else. So the question that I have for you today, what habit do you have that you could exchange it to make prayer first in your life? Maybe you're like, oh no, man, I wake up and I go make my breakfast and my cafe con, cafe con leche, con, you know, con tostadas, and that's my habit. And that's, okay, maybe you could exchange it and that move it a little further. Or maybe you could drink your coffee while you're praying. You know, but you need to make prayer, guys, what? A habit. Make prayer a habit. Daniel in the Bible had a habit of praying three times a day. Guys, and it was like clockwork. His prayer life was such a habit and it was such on point that you could set your watch based on when Daniel was praying. That's crazy. How do you know? Because it says that there was these guys that were trying to get him in trouble and they knew he would pray every day at noon. So at noon is that they were looking out for him praying. And that's where he was at noon. Where was he? He was praying. Can we be like that? We need to learn to make prayer what, guys? A habit. Number two, okay, number two, have a certain time. You need to have a certain time, all right, if we're going to start making prayer a priority in our lives. We need to have what? A certain time. The Bible says that Jesus got up early in the morning to spend time with his heavenly father. Why did he get up early in the morning? I'm going to say it like this. He would make an appointment with God. Guys, use your phone. Okay, and put it on your agenda. And my recommendation, all right, my wife and I are very different on this, okay? She prays at three in the morning, all right? Three in the morning, my wife is up like clockwork. She doesn't need an alarm. She gets up at three to pray. It's natural. And then by 4, 4.30, she's back in bed. And don't even try to wake her up at six to have prayer time. And I figured that out. I'm like, okay, you have your prayer time at your time, and I'll have prayer time at my time. You know, it's like, let me not mess with the wife. You know, they say, happy wife, happy, uh, happy life. Exactly. (laughs) So listen to this. Why do I think Jesus started out his day like that, early in the morning in prayer, before things got busy? Did you ever read the Bible and read Jesus' lifestyle and all the crazy stuff that was going on around him? Well, let me tell you something. It wasn't just Jesus, us. Doesn't your life start getting crazy right around 7, 7.30 in the morning, 8 o'clock? You think that you're going to be able to pray in the middle of all that craziness and all that busyness? No, you can't. So what do you need to do? You need to set a certain time. Put it in your agenda. Put it in your phone. Make a sound. And you know what? This is going to be my time with God. I'm going to make sure that I do it. Let me tell you something, guys. Very important. Prayer is not wasted time. A lot of people might think, oh, is that I'm wasting my time, okay? It helps you save time, okay? When I'm prayed up, listen to this, I can make eight decisions in one hour. When I'm not prayed up, it takes me eight hours to make one decision. (laughs) 
You know why? Because you're sharp when you pray. Look what Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 10 says. You can put that on the screen. Ecclesiastes 10, 10. It says, using a dull axe requires great strength. So sharpen the blade. That's the, wi- the value of wisdom, and it helps you succeed. Okay? So in other words, what that is saying, if the axe is not sharp, it's not good to cut wood with that axe. You need to sharpen your axe. You need to sharpen your life. There's a story about these two guys that were in a wood shopping contest. One of the guys was old, and the other guy was one of those young guys. He was like, you know, like Pastor Max, you know, like in his 30s, strong, good tan, you know. And these two guys are in a contest, a wood shopping contest, all right? And they say, okay, time to start. And they start hitting the trees with the ax. They start hitting it. But the young guy would be going at it, going at it, and he would notice something. About every 30 minutes or so, the old guy would go off to the corner and go into the shadows, and he wouldn't see what he was doing. And then the guy would come back and just continue cutting. The young guy says, you know what? I'm going to beat him because I'm not taking any breaks, man. I'm just keep going, 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 going. At the end of the day, they're about to tally who had chopped more wood. Guess who won? The old guy. The guy that would take the breaks. And the young guy was furious. He couldn't believe it. He goes, how can this guy taking all those breaks? I bet that when he was going into those shadows over there, he was bringing additional wood that he already had cut from before. So that he started looking for all these kind of excuses. And he went up to the guy and he says, what is it you've been doing the whole day over there? Every time you go into the shadow, you take a break. I've been killing myself, chopping wood, and you still beat me. What have you been doing? The guy goes, very simple. Every time I would go over there, I would sit down, and I would sharpen my axe. And when I would come back, it would cut a lot better than before. So what am I trying to tell you, church? When you pray, you know what you're doing? You're sharpening your axe. You're taking time to become more clear on what Daddy God is speaking, on what he's saying to make better decisions in your life so you can be more on point, more on target. I don't think nobody in this room wants to waste their time. And you know how, many, how much times we waste our time when we make mistakes because we act on impulse, because we don't pray or our prayer life is not sharp. If your prayer sh- life is sharp, man, you'll pick up on things real quick and you'll be ready to make the decisions that you need to make, all right? Point number three, point number three, okay? If we're going to create a lifestyle of prayer and we're learning about Jesus, he had a certain place to pray. He had a certain place to pray. It says that he got up early in the morning and what he would do, he would go to a solitary place. What does that mean, pastor? A place where he wouldn't be bothered, where he could focus on God, where he wasn't going to have a hundred things going on around him, all right? Jesus had a specific place, all right? It actually says that he would frequently go off into the wilderness, frequently go off into the desert. Why did Jesus want to go to the desert? Why did Jesus go out to the wilderness? To do what? To pray. Without the distraction, without the noise, without all the different things. I want to tell you something. Having a designated place to pray, okay, helps us remove distractions. And it frees us, church, okay? It frees us so that we could worship and pray to God out loud. I'm going to tell you something that maybe you've never seen it before, all right? But prayer before, it's something corporal. There's corporal prayer. We just did it now when we were worshiping, okay? Before that, prayer is a private thing. What does the Father say? What does Jesus say when talking about the Father? He goes, hey, when you're going to pray, go off to the place where only the Father sees you. Close the door and let nobody see. And pray to the Father who's in heaven who sees what you're doing there. And then the Father will reward you publicly. So when I come and pray about something public, you know what it means? That I've already been praying about that in private. Okay, you need to have a place to pray. I remember when my wife and I, we were getting married, 
and we had a choice to make. Did we spend a lot of money in a party, or did we invest in buying a pre-construction home? And I know that, you know, us Latins, we like partying and all that. But uh, my wife and I, when we were talking, we were like, man, everybody's going to dance. Everybody's going to drink. Everybody's going to do the thing. And once that's done, that's it. We could put a down payment to a house and have something that is going to last. And we decided to put a down payment to a pre-construction house. Now, this is the thing. When we were looking for that home, okay, I told my wife, babe, we need to have our room, okay? And after our room, I want to make sure that we have a room that is going to be our prayer room. Before we look for a guest room, before we have a room for the kids, before we do everything, I want to have a room that is my prayer room. Now, you can say, oh, is that you're the pastor, you're supposed to do that. No, guess what? I wanted to make sure that I would make a place for God within my home. I wanted to make sure that he would feel welcome, that he knew that I was thinking about him. And I would have made my prayer room. I remember when Hadassah was born, we had the extra room, you know, the, the third room. It was a three-bedroom townhouse. When David was born, okay, and Gabby's like, we're going to need the prayer room. I'm like, no, we're not. I don't know where David's going to sleep, but I'm not touching that prayer room. And you might think like, (laughs) you might think like, what in the world's wrong with this pastor? You know what I told her? It's time to move. It's time to move. How do you know? Because we don't fit here no more. No, but you have two kids, your room. No, we need the prayer room. It's time to move. Now, you might say, Pastor, I don't have a big enough house. Man, I know people that are sitting right here that have made a closet in their home, their prayer room. They've made a space for God there. I know people that are here, okay, that your bathroom (laughs) is your prayer room because you know that when you go in there, you're not going to be bothered. You know, praise God. You go, you do your things, and you pray to the Lord. That's awesome. You're not going to be disturbed in there. But guys, what I'm trying to tell you is to have a certain place. It could be a desk off in the corner. It could be an old couch that you have there that is your couch. You know, it has the body, it has the shape of your body. Anybody has had a couch like that before? My dad used to have one. Nobody could sit in that couch. It was dirty as heck. All right. But it was my dad's couch. It actually had his form on it. When he would get up, like you could see the shape of his back. I was like, that is amazing. He had been sitting on that thing since he came from Cuba. You know, it could be your couch, but you need to have what, guys? Your place of prayer, your place of prayer so that you could do what? You could build a routine. I'm going to give you something simple. Go buy a small carpet somewhere and lay it next to your bed. And every morning when you get up, you have your carpet there. You put it out. That's your place of prayer. You don't have to go all out. Oh, man, I have to move now. I'm not going to find the house in this market, right? Like we're looking, I'm not going to find the house in this market. Think through how to do it. I remember some years ago, I was staying up with this lady in Tennessee. We were at a conference. And uh, I remember we went to this conference. We didn't have money to stay in a hotel. So we knew somebody that was living in the town. And we asked her if we could stay in her house. This lady was like one of those prayer ladies, you know. Any of you guys know what in church religious terms are called the prayer warriors? Anybody know some of those people? Well, I stayed with one of those prayer warriors one day. And let me tell you something, I learned a thing or two that day. That lady, it was five in the morning, she was making breakfast and she was praying as she was making the sandwiches and heating up the milk and doing that. I was like, who in the world is she talking to? I was like young in my faith. I'm like, who is she? And I heard her singing to the Lord and she was just free in the morning. And at the end, she goes, I want to show you something. She took us up to the attic. She had one of those attics, you know, that you pull down. You know, and you put, we have one of those here and you put it down and in the attic of her house, she had laid out like a little prayer room up there. It was hot. All right. Anybody know an attic that is cold? I have not seen an attic that is cold, but she, she set up her attic and her attic was her prayer place. And she know, you know what she told me? The kids don't find me when I'm up here. Of course, nobody finds her. The Holy Spirit does, you know, (laughs) She couldn't be found when she was up there. She would pray to the Lord. It was what? It was her place of prayer. Jesus had a place of prayer. Okay, he would go off into the wilderness. And my fourth point, okay, have a certain plan. Okay, so we build habit. We build the habit of prayer. Okay, we give them time. 
We have a place. And then we need to have what? We need to have a plan of prayer. How many of you guys say, okay, pastor, I'm going to pray. And the first moment that you close your eyes, your mind just starts drifting away into the game last night. And why Jimmy Butler missed a shot. Now, anyways, you know, or your mind drifts off into what you got to do today in that business meeting. Or your mind drifts off like, oh man, I haven't put gas in the car and I'm not going to make it on time to this appointment. How many of you guys, the moment that you say, I'm going to pray, a bunch of things come to your mind. Come on, raise your hand. You're in God's house, right? You can be honest here. So when you have, guys, a plan, okay, laid out for prayer, it helps you focus. When Jesus was talking to his disciples about prayer, what did he give them? He gave them the Lord's Prayer. They were saying, how should we pray? Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this. He didn't say pray this. He said pray like this. And he laid out, he mapped out, he gave them an outline of prayer. And when you go to the Bible and you read the Lord's Prayer, it's an outline of prayer. It's not for you to repeat that. It's certain steps. So our father that are in heaven, my father that is in heaven, blessed be your name. And all of a sudden I'm praying and I'm like, Lord, thank you because you're my heavenly father. I have a father and I'm part of a family because you are our father. I'm not alone. And I start going off by there. Blessed be your name. And then I start saying the names of the Lord. You are Jehovah Jireh. You're my provider. You're Jehovah Rapha. You're the one that heals all my, and I start blessing the names of the Lord. And then I start going on and on. Let your kingdom come. And I ask God's kingdom over different things. And I use that as an outline, guys. And there's different prayer outlines in the Bible, you know. There's tabernacle prayer. There's different prayers that we see in the Bible. But listen to what I'm going to say to you this morning. As we pray, as we pray, okay, we could include music. We could include Bible reading. We could include journaling. I'm going to tell you how I pray because maybe this will help somebody. And worship team, you guys can start coming up. This is how I've done it for years. Because if there's a creature of habit in this room, it is this person here. (laughs) I am a creature of habit. And when I get out of my habits, it's like chaotic, you know. And my wife says, amen. (laughs) So how do I do it? Well, I get up. All right, and the first thing I do, I have my prayer playlist of music on Spotify. And I have my prayer list, and that list, I just add on songs and add on songs and add on songs. It's already like by 200 and something songs. And I'll just pick like two or three to play together. And what I do is while those songs are singing, you know what I'm doing? I'm singing. Now, let me tell you something. You guys in this room, you don't want to hear me sing, all right? My gift is speaking, not singing. Praise God for the people we got singing. You don't want to hear me sing. When I sing at home, the water in the shower just stops all of a sudden, you know? But that moment at home, I pick two or three songs, and what do I do? I sing to the Lord. I sing to him. And then after I do that, then I start praying. I start doing what? I start talking to him. The same way I'm talking to you guys. I start talking to God. Then after I talk to God, you know what I do? I take a little break to see if I'm going to hear something. Lord, are you going to say anything according to these things that I've said? Now, after I talk to him, you know what I do? I open up my Bible. And then I'll go through certain scriptures. Usually, if you're going to start doing this, I recommend that you go into the Psalms. Actually, I've been doing that right now. Okay, every day, okay, I've been going through two Psalms and a Proverbs. Because the Psalms help you in your relationship with God. Proverbs helps you in your relationship with people. All right, so I'm doing that on a daily basis. I read my Bible. After I read my Bible, you know what I do? I have a little journal. Sometimes it's my iPad. And I write down what I think God is speaking to me from what I just read. I put that to the side. And then you know what I do? I get my phone and I have my prayer list. And that's when I start praying for the different people and the different situations and for the church and for the vision and all these things that are going on. And then I get up and go. And when that happens, you know what I feel like? Man, I am ready to tackle this day. I am ready to go forward. When that doesn't happen, you know how I feel? Like a mess. 
Like everything is all over the place and problems are coming from here and a prayer situation over there. And, but when I put all those things together and you might say, Pastor, how long does that take you to do? Well, I've taken it all the way from being hours in prayer, one or two hours, to, you know what? This habit that I just told you, I could do this in about 25, 30 minutes. So you don't have to say, oh man, I need like a bunch of time. No. Just set aside the same thing you would watch a TV show, 30 minutes, set aside for the Lord. And you know what? I'm going to start building these habits. I'm going to start doing this. I want to start praying. I want to make prayer a priority in my life. And you might be like, Pastor, I don't even know how to do that. That's what we're doing the 21 days of prayer. Come and we're going to teach you. We're going to teach you how to pray. I'm going to print out a bunch of these different prayer tracks. Okay, so you have the prayer of Jabez, the Trinity prayer, different tracks that you could have so that you could use. I'm going to be giving you guys all that during the 21 days of prayer. And the last slide, if we have that slide back there. This is how I want to conclude. Prayer is the foundation for every Christian. If you are a healthy believer, you need to be doing what? You need to be praying. The same way that you eat, the same way we need to feed our spirit through prayer. If we're healthy Christians, we need to be doing what? We need to be praying. And I want to close this morning by saying not only the 21 days of prayer are going to help you, but you know that we have prayer small groups here at NUMA. Yesterday morning, there was one of those prayer small groups that was going on. And now, okay, actually this week that just ended, because today we're actually starting a new week, we ended our summer term of small groups. But in about three weeks, we start the new season of small groups. It starts right at the end of the 21 days of prayer. Join a prayer small group. Or maybe you're there and you have a passion for prayer. Maybe you could start a prayer small group. If there's anything we could be doing in these times, especially the way that things are right now, is doing what? Is praying. We need to be praying. I want you to close your eyes right there where you're at. And I want you to ask the Lord this very simple question. Holy Spirit, what are you telling me through this message today? Holy Spirit, what are you telling me with this message today? And let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart. Just a moment. Just you and God. Right there where you're at. I'm going to ask you a very simple question. And if in this season, you want to make prayer a priority in your life. Maybe you don't know how to do it. You want to learn. But you say, Lord, I want to make this a priority in my life. If that's you right there where you're at, I just want you to stand to your feet. If you're saying... Lord, I'm making prayer a priority of my life in this season. If that's you, just stand up. And don't be afraid. You're not making a commitment with PC. You're making a commitment with the Lord. And he's going to teach you. He's going to be there with you. So, Father, right now I pray for all those people that are standing up. I thank you for their lives, Lord. Because today, Lord, you're touching their hearts And they're making a commitment before you. They're not staying back. They're going to respond to what you're showing them. They're going to be active, Lord God, in learning to pray and going after prayer. And Father, I pray that they can start making this a habit in their life, that they can set aside a place, they can set aside a time, Lord, that they can have a plan that they would prepare for. And I pray that when they do that, Lord, you will show up in such a mighty way that they will never put it to the side. That they would know, Lord, that there's a great joy. There's a great joy in praying and in communicating with you, Lord. I pray that as they do that, Lord, you would fill them with your Holy Spirit. And that they would be ready to go, Lord God, and deal with whatever the day has ahead for them, Lord God. Just with supernatural wisdom as they walk out of that place with their axe sharpened, Lord God. Ready to tackle on the world. I pray that over them right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You guys may be seated. Now, I want to speak to whoever might be here this morning or watching online. 
that has never invited Jesus into their heart as Lord and Savior. You might be here today and say, Pastor, uh, man, I would love to pray. I would love to pray to God, but I don't even know if I have a relationship with God. I don't even know if, if I know him. And you're saying that he's a heavenly father. Man, what is that all about? Well, I'm going to tell you something. It's all about knowing that there's a God that created you for a relationship with him. And that because of sin, that relationship was broken. But the Bible says that he loved you so much that he sent his one and only son, Jesus, to pay for your sins and to pay for my sins. And whoever receives Jesus as their Lord and Savior, the Bible says that your sins are forgiven and you're made into a son or daughter of God. That that separation that was between you and God, you know what, is canceled out completely by Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. He didn't stay on the cross. The Bible says he resurrected on the third day. And now he's seated at the uh, right side of our heavenly father. And today, right here where you're at, you can make him your Lord and Savior. And let me tell you something. It'll be the best decision you make in your life. So if you're watching online, or if you're here this morning, and you're, you know what, Pastor? I want to make that decision. If you're there, just raise your hand and I want to pray with you. Anybody here this morning that says, I want to make this decision today that you've never done it before. And you say, you know what? It's making sense to me now. I want to go ahead and do this. All right. All right. I'm still going to make this prayer because I never know who's watching through that camera. And I know that this is recorded on YouTube. So if that's you, right there where you're at in church, you guys are going to help me do this prayer together. All right. Just bow your heads and close your eyes and pray with me, Lord Jesus. I want to thank you for living a perfect life and dying for me on the cross. Today I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I thank you for paying for my sins. And from this moment on, take me by the hand into the arms of my Heavenly Father and fill me with the Holy Spirit that I can live for the purposes that you have for me. In your name, Jesus, I pray. And all God's people this morning say, amen and amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord this morning. Come on, put your hands together for him. Thanks again for listening. If you liked what you've heard, subscribe to our channel and share it with others. Now, for more content from NUMA and to connect with us, visit our webpage at numachurchmiami.org. We love you and we hope to connect with you soon.